Um, also, I want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, made uh, offers for presentations. Um, I've just been overwhelmed with the demand for people to speak um, because I just have no time, but this is awesome because uh, now I think we, for the first time, we'll have presentations all the way into Canada. So, um, this will be pretty cool, yeah. Um, so, first off, I need to bring Dave on. Dave, right? Dave. Chris, okay, good. So, um, here. Chris, okay, great. So, um, before we get started, we're going to have um, two uh, initial introductions. Chris is by our so he's going to give a brief chat about uh, Cinch, which is awesome. I love Cinch. Um, and then after, we're going to have a quick uh, lightning one minute uh, chat um, on smart contracts from Sergey, who will be coming and presenting on our last. Um, of the year, our last presentation of the year, December 15th, we'll be doing an uh, engineering and technical feedback on smart contracts, which will be awesome. So he's going to give us a one minute slide present. And first, we're going to have Cinch. Which from Cinch? Awesome. Thank you all the days. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to keep this really short. I know they want to go out and have a drink later on. Uh, <laughs> so I'm from Cinch. Uh, I think we paid the beer or something. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we provide a real-time application uh, framework for Android, uh, iOS, and, J and JS. So if you ever need real voice, either to the regular phone network or app trap calling, I hope you'll check that out. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Finch. All right. And now we have Sergey. Remember what I said, one minute now. All right. Time it. All right. Hi everyone. So at Demo, we just launched something called SmartContract.com, and on SmartContract.com, a lot of the stuff you've been hearing about how smart contracts should be, uh, you can do today. So you can actually make a smart contract that takes an external API data feed, executes conditional statements around that API data feed, puts that into the blockchain, and then updates uh, the contract status also in the blockchain to create a blockchain-based uh, record of proof contractual performance. So this is what a smart contract looks like right now. These are the smart terms that are being tracked. Here's all the data that's being tracked for this particular smart contract. Uh, and all this is once again reflected in the blockchain. And what we've made in version 0.1 is basically a wizard where you can pull in the data feeds that you want, make conditional statements around them, and create a smart contract that lives in the blockchain. Uh, you can find that smartcontract.com to play around with it now. And on December 15th, we'll be doing a technical deep dive if, if you folks want to learn more. Uh, and we may do something on the 14th where Sergey will be doing our annual hackathon lab. And I'm going to do the right right? Yeah, you guys can always reach me at Sergey at smartcontract.com before then, or I'll, I'll see you guys then when we do the technical deep dive in the event before. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, let me introduce our guest because he's so cool and so smart and so awesome. Uh, so um, uh, have anybody uh, of you gone to GitHub uh, Repo, Bitcoin, Data.js? Raise your hands if you can. Do you understand what's going on? No, that's exactly right. It's so hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, when JJ told me about it, uh, what he was doing, um, with Bitcoin DPS, I was like, whoa, dude, that's like a new browser, and like, really awesome. And he said, well, you know, it's not necessarily. It's not in the browser? Yeah, it's in the browser. It's in the browser, but it's not in the browser. It's in the browser. Okay. <laughs> All right. I still think it's hot because, um, one, it's actually, again, doing cool things with JavaScript and Bitcoin. Um, I also think that uh, he's done a lot of work on bringing that to life. Um, and I felt that it would be awesome for us to see because all of us are working building stuff in Bitcoin. Um, many of us also work in JavaScript, so maybe some of the fun ideas presented here might be useful for your own work. I know we're looking at it as well. Um, before JJ was at Bitbay, you were at No Jitsu. How do you know about No Jitsu? It's been hipster for a while. I know it's a Although I, okay. Um, but No Jitsu was awesome. Um, so JJ was one of the people that was one of the first engineers? Or? Yeah, I was one of the most veteran members. Wow. Okay, so he's promised me that this deep dive seminar today is going to be intense, it's going to be comprehensive, we're going to be smart, 
and it's just going to be so good that we're going to leave here at New York. password is pubnub.com all over this. No, it's not. I don't know if you got to work with it. Steal a file key from a server using 
you're doing something or any major event state, or a complicated event state, or a lot of money in the state, you want to use the official application. But before this, you can only use the default email which again is severely limited. So this is what the point you get us on the slide. Well, when the point you got us on the slide, um, you can link to it from a single plus binding in Node.js. Now this is not specific to Node.js. You can do this in Ruby, Lua, Python, anything you want. Any you can link to the Node.js and you can make money for that language. And you can start calling official functions that are not for you, and in this case, PowerShell. So what's happening here is you require a point of view that they have. And once it opens, I know it's actually wrong, but that should be open. Once it opens, you can do the point on block. And you can watch the blocks open. As soon as it's open, the block changer starts down. It literally is the point of view. And it just now rolls the block change. You watch all the blocks in it. You can see every transaction. Um, so the C blocks and the C transactions, you know, the thing the classes of blocks and transactions in the So if you have a very JavaScript context, so that's, that's very, very useful. I think this is uh, sort of the kind of slide. So I would like to show you that it's very we're going to test that possibly. So first of all, let's start up Tronicon, which now uses Bitcoin in JS as a backup. When we see this wallet, we are actually seeing the official Bitcoin being in the same process as your JS. So let's start that up. I'm just doing a debug for all of these testing activities. It is, it is still there, you may see some other work. So we do uh, debug, timeline, backend, bitcoin, and that's it. And now it's across the blockchain, much like bitcoin uh, does. And now let's see, I've got one here. And as you can see down there, there's the blockchain status. Right? Now, one I can do. Excuse me. Yeah, this is the front corner of the wall that was using up. And then uh, they use it on DJS. And so, those are the keys and threads happening. The total balance. So, um, so let's go to a test now, Boston. And, uh, So in, uh, in, in, you see here, you can actually scan the QR code. 
Um, but since I'm using this in the end, I'm going to have to do it not on the machine. So I will not finish it. Why? Okay. So I think we're using track one and uh, you would just be the big point of this one. So now we have our test method address for our problem. We can go say a page of this address and uh let's uh oh one. So, if you didn't hear that, that was the sound of money being put into my test panel. So I said I don't want to go But now you can, you can actually see that there. So I have now point oh one two five test panel numbers. Um, this test panel uh, transaction is present from here. Now, the other thing you will notice um, on the screen is the contact on the score. That is the blockchain score. And it is totally broken. It's under all the bits. It uses virtual functions to get the blocks, to get the transactions, this and that. <coughs> so, this it, it automatically shows the latest block, not necessarily the, the latest block in history. Only the latest block is down. So right now we're looking, we're looking at the latest block. We can go down and see all the transactions. You can see all the headers. And uh, you can see, you can look at all the transactions. And so let's look at the Okay, so now we see this transaction. Now, the problem with this is if we find is but if you want to use this for a blockchain store, the problem is Bitcoin D, when it stores the blockchain as well, as I showed in the video of the company, usually it's a prefix, it's key value store, it's a prefix, and Bitcoin D is B, and the block has to be C, and the transaction ID. Um, but there's no A. It's sort of some other metadata, but there's no A. So what I mean by that, is it doesn't keep track of what transactions pertain to which transactions. So on blockchain.info, right, you want to get a trust and see exactly what transactions is done. The only way to do this on the entire blockchain, you know, we have a thousand blocks. Obviously, that would take a long time. Um, the other way to do it is to maintain your own index. Or I'm kind of tempted to do this to write to Bitcoin D's blockchain level with the sub and add keys to it. You could do that in theory, and it hopefully it wouldn't break. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, you look at all right, some of this Bitcoin address here. So it's so like right now. So you notice it took a little, uh, it took a while to load it. Um, that's because I'm only looking at the last 20,000 blocks. And uh, the last 20,000 blocks is probably about 28. So we see the design of our community just like that. Um, but right now it's not scaling the entire block. That would take a long time, and I really need to catch it. So no one wants to wait there and then lock it, right? So there are solutions that may be implemented in Bitcoin EJS. So now that you've seen a uh now that you've seen another solution of that when I originally forked Bitcoin. To make it into the Bitcoin D so to make it into the library, um, I tried 
or a binary maintainer or whatever language maintain and deal with it going into the other problem you might want to do while using a little bit on the SL is something that is just no JS uses this for the library is something that's no JS uses two plus plus or is binary other languages other languages you see that
goes there and it's going to be more fun and it's going to be So, and probably we can just one of these apps that are there. Yes, yes. So, I'll run these three calls too. We run these three calls and have to make a you know, JSON and HTTP request. And uh, that's a lot of I know. And we kind of talked to this up in the server, but it's a lot. So, yeah, it would be much less for that. Because it's in the same process. Yes, it's a whole node JS file. So as you saw on like the last slide, isn't that like we use Bitcoin that like and that's when we know the lot can start with email. And then you can use Bitcoin on lock, Bitcoin on transaction, see all the transactions, see all the blocks, see all the peers by it. Um, but sending the lot to send it kind of that. Uh, there are two ways to do that. One is to build the transaction itself. You can set the outputs in this you know, raw script and uh, be on the one thing. And Bitcoin EBS can automatically build and be available in the inputs. You know the ones that you have. And make that transaction for you to say. The other way is to call a function that you set the word of trust and the mountain and bottom uh, of But if you do it from JavaScript, 
that tax rate stays in that rate to the regards to that up, even if you had to sell that not zero. Right? So the correct way to do it would be to pass in a buffer and the zero is um, So that's one more of the answer. Is that there's no way to zero strength. There's no way of doing any zero strength. So that pastor is the same number. And if there's any growing process out there, the funny is really good to be a hundred. It would be the pastor. That's the one goal we're going to have to And I'm going to fix that future to receive buffers. And then I'll need zero buffer afterwards because buffers are out the outside of the And uh, yeah, that would be the most good. So there are potentially some vulnerabilities. But at the same time, I like to think that there are less because it's easy to get stuck and not all through it. Okay. Um, I think the easy one is about some of the series series. So are there certain things that can be series or are there certain things that can be series? Pretty much every translation. So one thing I mentioned is not easy to do right now. Um, because it goes through every transaction in a block, and uh, yeah, because when you want to block the transactions, you want to get three of these outputs in the input, right? So you have to look at the transaction ID of the previous transaction and index that previous output, get that transaction, and then put the previous output in the input. That's the only way it's useful, right? Um, so it does that, and right now it doesn't seem. Um, I do have a code written that has been tested that will be based in the future. What's the difference? Yeah, well, it's pretty much everything else is completely asynchronous and all that, but it's, uh, it's, I, I can't look at anything else that's not uh, asynchronous. Well, insight is, is a lot. Well, it's all the block. It's really a lot of Well, like I said, it's um, it's what I was happening with the actual block and the actual block. There's no chance to be like for the blockchain accidentally. By accepting a lot of shooting the time. So it's just it stays in the same process. You don't have another you don't need to have a process over here like the problem you need to do. It's just, it's a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. Um, so there are major benefits to it, whether you have a lot to it, or, or, or like I said, back in the same time. What did I get it? What did I get it? Set up the I actually have the option. When you want to 
I'm going to solve this thing. So you can do the options in that. So when you instead here, um, you get an option. You can say I want to test that, or you can get an option called RPC. And it will set up an RPC for the RPCs that are recorded. And you can also get a data error. And a data error right here is a big part of the LP. You can call it a directory to download watching and which is a big point of the option. So you can actually have multiple instances of Bitcoin uh, ESKS.
Everyone wave. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I think, uh, I